Welcome back to another episode of the e-learning series on GFSM, the Government Finance Statistics Manual. In this episode, I will introduce you to the GFS concept of consolidation of activities within government. I will explain the idea and rationale behind consolidation, elaborate its implementation in practice, and how consolidation impacts data. Suppose we have two countries with different structures of government. Country A is quite centralized, where most of the spending occurs at the central level. For example, an education program of 100 million is operated directly by the central government. In contrast, country B is more decentralized and the responsibility for education, again with a total value of 100 million, lies with the local governments. The local governments are financed through grants received from the central government. How can fiscal activities in these countries best be compared? We could compare total government expenses in both countries by just adding up expense of each level of government. Country A would then present a lower level of government expense than country B. This is because country A would show only the spending by the central government, while the total expense in country B would include both the transfers paid by the central government and the education expense paid at the local level. You wouldn't say that there was twice as many lessons provided, or are you just seeing double? The same is true for revenue. Country A would indicate a lower level of government revenue than country B. This is not because the level of fiscal activity is different in these countries, but rather the interaction with the rest of the economy takes place at different levels of the government. This brings us to a general point in compiling fiscal statistics. Consolidation, the process by which all government units are combined and presented as a single reporting sector. The general government and public sectors are typically composed of many different institutional units. These units are engaged in transactions with units in other sectors and frequently between each other. Transactions among government units can, for example, be one-off or periodic grants, interest payments, fees or taxes between government levels, such as motor vehicle taxes a ministry has to pay. Furthermore, debtor-creditor relationships exist within or between different levels of government, such as loans that are provided from central government units to, say, local governments. Simply adding the revenue, expense or loans of each government unit would produce an inflated fiscal picture. These internal transactions between government units are not relevant for an analysis of the government's fiscal position. Internal transactions do not reflect the interaction with the rest of the economy. In essence, we're interested in fiscal reports that have eliminated this internal double counting. How do we do this? Consolidation is a means of separating economic activity within a group of institutional units from the rest of the economy. By consolidating, a government finance statistics compiler eliminates internal flows and internal debtor-creditor relationships from a group of units that are combined and presents only external transactions and relationships. Typically, GFS compilers perform consolidation as the last step in preparing statistics for publication. Consolidation is executed for each level of government. Let me illustrate how consolidation works. The concept is quite straightforward. We need to identify and then eliminate all transactions and debtor-creditor relationships that occur within the general government sector. By consolidating, Data of all general government institutional units are compiled as if they were a single unit interacting with the rest of the economy. All inter- and intrasectoral flows and relationships are not considered. Let's look at the example to see how consolidation affects GFS outcomes. Country A's data are unchanged. In country B, the 100 billion grant provided from central government to local government will appear twice in the data first as an expense payable by the central government and secondly as a revenue receivable by the local government. By removing both of these flows, total expense and revenue of the combined group will be reduced by 100 million. By consolidating, data comparison is improved between these two countries because consolidated government expense and revenue data only reflect interactions with the rest of the economy. An important matter to note is that Neither the net operating balance nor the government deficit are affected because both revenue and expense are adjusted symmetrically by consolidation. This symmetrical reduction leads to a general rule. The gross presentation of aggregates such as total revenue, total expense and the total value of financial assets and liabilities are being reduced in a systematic manner through consolidation and thus present a less inflated picture. 
However, the balancing items such as net financial worth, financial assets minus liabilities, are not affected. Before closing, I'd like to make a practical note. In principle, consolidation should be applied to all transactions and all debtor-creditor relationships. However, in practice, some limitations apply because detailed data on both the receiving side and paying side, a whom-to-whom -whom relationship, are not always readily available, or the amounts may be insignificant. For instance, the compiler may lack data for consolidation if local government report loans outstanding, without distinguishing between loans from the central government and those from banks. The GFS compiler could, however, use the budgetary account balance sheet as a source to find the information on central government loans to local governments. In this way, the compiler can maximize consolidation coverage with relatively little effort. Tracing and understanding all substantial flows in debtor-creditor relationships is an essential task, but efforts should be minimized on consolidating insignificant amounts. Consolidation may require significant resources and take a great deal of time during completion, but, as demonstrated, it is important to derive analytical aggregates that are meaningful, sound and comparable. A basic understanding of the consolidation approach is key to accurate and comparable government finance statistics. We don't enjoy seeing double, so let's use GFS to get a clear picture.